Hi, <laughs> I'm Michelle Somberfield. I thought I would do another video because earlier today I did one and I was talking about the importance of kindness. And I thought, you know, I talked for like 15 to 17 minutes. The video was kind of going long. I didn't want to bore people. But by the time I turned the computer off, I thought, boy, I just scratched the surface of that topic. <laughs> so I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of talk some more about kindness and what kindness is. Not that I'm some great expert, mind you. I'm just saying that's the topic that's on my mind right now. So I was talking in my other video about gestures and doing kind things for people. It could be doing something as simple as making someone a pot of coffee or getting them a meal. It could be donating to something. It could be help picking someone up if they slip and fall. It could be any number of things. I was also talking about how kindness is something where you do it not necessarily thinking that you're going to get something in return, right? But what I wanted to talk about was kindness isn't something that necessarily is always done for someone you know very well, someone who you agree with, someone you like. Kindness can be something as simple as respect. You know that old saying about live and let live? You may not agree with somebody else, but you don't need to fight with them. You don't need to ruin somebody else's day in order to make yourself feel better. I think kindness is something that a person has to make a conscious decision to carry with them in their heart. So kindness isn't about whether or not I do or don't like or agree with the person who's right in front of me. It's not about the person in front of you. It's about the person you are inside and want to be and choose to be. And I, I think that that's, that's really important. Um, so thinking about kindness, um, I, I was thinking about, somebody had commented on one of my videos about a week or so ago, and I responded, and he said, thank you for being so nice to me. And then he said it a second time <laughs> as we kind of went back and forth a bit. And I thought, gee, I, I hope he's not used to people not being nice to him. So I actually went on his channel. I thought, oh, wow, he is so cool. He's very stylish, very artistic, speaks about things that I think are important, has, has important messages for people. He seems a bit eccentric. And so I thought maybe that's why he was thanking me for being kind or nice. You know, maybe he's not used to people being nice to him because he's got a lot of style. And sometimes people don't know how to take other people who are fully confident in who they are and have a very different style than they do. And I thought about that. And I thought, you know, if we all were the same, then nobody would be unique. If I tried to make everybody into somebody who thought like me or dressed like me or, or red lipstick like me, I wouldn't be unique. I had a boyfriend for a couple years who used to go on and on and on and talk about how, you know, he knew the right way to do things. And he told me at one point that he was mentoring his younger friend and really teaching him a lot about the business world. At one point, his friend said to me, you know, I really like your boyfriend, except for he's trying to make me into him. <laughs> and I thought, all right. So I think kindness isn't just about doing something for someone if you're going to get something in return. And it's not just about being kind towards someone because they think like you do. 
kindness can be having enough respect for someone that you listen to what they say and even if you don't agree with them you can let go of it you don't have to force your opinion on them you don't have to try to make them think like you you don't have to try to insult them to ruin their day people who think that cutting other people down will lift themselves up are wrong i mean that's just not true um and i thought a lot about how i've had different comments over the last year and a half since i've been posting videos and how some people are very positive some people are very negative and then some people will basically say they don't agree with me on things but then they'll put some nice sort of clarifier into what they're saying one woman told me she found some of the things I wrote about in my book absolutely appalling, but she said I had an interesting life. Another woman said she would never agree with me on things, certain things, but she said she really respected the fact that I get conversations going about reincarnation. She respects the fact I'm very consistent and just very forthright about things. So, you don't always have to agree with someone or feel that somebody is exactly who you think they should be or exactly like you in order to respect them and be kind toward them. And I think that that's really important. I remember when I was in um, junior high, it was like seventh or eighth grade, I think, and I was in math class and there was a kid who a lot of kids used to tease. And I remember he had a bad cold and his nose was starting to like run down his face. And I thought, what do I do? Oh, I have a Kleenex. And I handed him a Kleenex. Okay. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of other kids in this room who would rather have used that to make in fun of him, to watch himself, you know, become embarrassed they would have rather have used that as a reason to make, you know, be rude to him. But I wanted to help him. And the funny thing is, when you make a gesture to help somebody else, it actually does so much for you, or at least it does for me. It makes me feel like I am being the person I want to be. Now, I know, um, I know somebody who likes to argue about political things online and he'll argue a lot and has a really hard time stopping the arguments he has online about political things, even with a lot of his relatives. And then it gets to the point where different relatives are unfriending him or he's unfriending somebody else because they just don't know how to say, okay, let's agree to disagree. Let, let's stop arguing, okay? And um, I just think that's very strange when people can't just say, okay, it's interesting that you see things that way. I don't see things that way, but let's agree to disagree. <laughs> I think it's interesting when relatives are unfriending each other because, you know, because they have different beliefs. It's, it's just bizarre to me. It's, it's very strange to me. Again, I have to say that um, being kind is not about who is right in front of you at the moment. It's about who are you and what is in you that is going to make you respond to somebody else. What is going to make you respond to that person you know very well who might be driving you crazy? What is going to make you respond to that stranger who needs help or that person who you think is just so different that, that you don't think you'll ever understand them? We can all respect one another. We don't have to absolutely adore one another in order to respect one another. And, and I really you know, wanted to just talk more about that. I, I wanted to say that. I know we're living in a world now where people talk about diversity, diversity, diversity all the time. And I don't want to get into that. And I don't really want to talk about specifics because 
I'm just talking about general decency, kindness, you know, I, I was at a grocery store not too long ago and it was a really busy day and the grocery store staff were really blocking a lot of the aisles because they were restocking the shelves. And of course that's their job and we're lucky they're doing it. But this one guy pulled his cart out right in the middle of this long line of people who are waiting at a um, cash register. And he was blocking me and I couldn't get beyond him. And a gentleman who saw what was happening said, hey, you know, sir, you're in her way. And even though I could do that myself, it was very touching to see this, this guy want to come to my rescue. It was very sweet, I thought. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I went to camp. I was 11. I went to camp and I was very homesick because it was the first time I was away from home for an extended period of time. And I remember we had to take this hike and we were going over a small metal bridge and you could see through the bottom of it because the grating in the bottom of it like didn't hide much. And I froze, I was petrified. And this one girl who barely knew me, instead of making fun of me and calling me a coward, she said, here, take my hand. And she pulled me across the bridge. I thought that was so sweet of her. You know, she could have made in fun of me. She could, you know, but she didn't. She helped me, you know. Um, there's, there's just so many things. When I had skin cancer surgery in 2018, the right side of my face was really messed up for a long time because the doctor had to cut up the side of my face and pull the skin up to cover up a patch that was missing here after he took the cancer out. And it really mangled up my right eye, which still doesn't look totally normal. But my face was really a mess for a number of months, really a big mess. And I remember these guys who worked down the hall from me in a different department were so nice. They knew I was devastated. You know, I looked a mess. I had horrible bruises. One lady told me I looked like I'd been in a car accident. My face was just mangled up looking on the right side. And these two guys every day would talk to me really nice, ask me how I was doing, tell me it was going to heal, tell me I didn't look too bad, even though I knew they were lying. <laughs> um, but they would talk to me and, and I really, I really didn't like it when people told me that I didn't look that bad because I really was very messed up for a while, very messed up. But I liked the fact that they took it upon themselves to talk to me more than normal and to just constantly be kind and ask me how I was doing and talk to me about work too. They didn't just talk to me about um, how messed up my face was, but or they would talk about their own things, but they made me feel special and important at a time when I was extremely depressed. They didn't have to do that. They weren't going to get anything from me. I worked in a different department than they did. I couldn't give them a raise. I couldn't give them time off. I wasn't going to type their letters faster or do anything for them. There was no real benefit um, other than they were very kind. So I have to say that being kind is something that I think is important. I think it's something that is a quality you carry with you. It's a choice. It's not about who's in front of you. It's about who you want to be out in the world. And, um, you know, sometimes you don't always agree with other people. Sometimes other people aren't going to be what you wish they were. Sometimes it's, it, it feels like, like that other person deserves to be told off or that other person deserves to be ignored. But I can tell you that most of the time, if you take the time to get to know someone, it can actually enrich your life. You either learn something or you just realize that you have more of a capacity for kindness and patience or tolerance than you realized you did. Or maybe you realize that that other person who you might have been inclined to hurt has already been hurt 
by others and, and you don't want to add to it. So I, I just wanted to talk about that because kindness isn't just about giving materialistic things. Um, it's really an attitude. It's really a respect. It's really something that you, that you carry with you. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. I know one of the most loving people in the world was my my nanny, my grandmother on my mom's side. My, my grandmothers, my other grandmothers were wonderful too, but I was closest to nanny. And she was always so kind and caring. I remember she told me once about a friend of hers who looked down on people who did jobs like hauling trash. And my nanny said, one day she said to her friend, you know, how would you feel if nobody came to pick up your trash? What would you do? Don't you need that service? Can't you respect somebody who is, who is doing something for you that you would not want to have to do yourself and is doing something for you so that you don't have a big mess, <laughs> you know, in your yard? You know, life, life a lot of times is about, I think, being open-minded and respectful. And I, I think the world would really miss um, the garbage men, the maintenance men, um, or women even, a lot more than we would, I hate to say, you know, miss people who make, um, you know, fancier clothes. <laughs> I mean... How, how fancy do you have to be on a, a regular basis or, or, or people who make, you know, the fancier cars? I mean, I'm not knocking them, but I'm just saying, I think we live in a society where we judge people a lot on really strange things. And, you know, sometimes people who aren't living all fancy are actually making that choice. I remember, I think it was Sean Penn, actor Sean Penn, I, I think it was him. I saw something once where he was talking about how he spends a lot of time in some other country helping poor people. Now this is a big movie star who, who could just hang out in Hollywood or in a fancy mansion or two, you know? And I saw some show where he was talking about how it was like his mission to help people. So anyways, I'm digressing, but I just thought it was important to talk about kindness. And it's important that people realize that maybe we can't help our initial reactions to situations and other people, but we can still, after our initial you know, gut reactions, we still get to choose how we handle the situations in life we're in. And I think kindness is the most valuable, kindness, respect is the most valuable quality that each of us could continue to hold and grow in our beings. So anyway, that's just what I wanted to say, because what's the point in me talking about reincarnation and having multiple lifetimes if I don't talk about kindness? Because, you know, kindness is something that in every single one of my lifetimes I remember that was important. And also I have to say, you know, if I remember a lifetime where I feel that I was not a kind person, I still feel ashamed to this day about it. Um, and there are some lifetimes where I can look back and I can see where I was egotistical about something, where I was too sure of myself, you know, about something, or I didn't communicate well with somebody else, or I held on to resentments too much, you know, 
so I, I do think that in every lifetime, it's important to focus on kindness. Anyway, that's my lecture. I'm just blabbing. <laughs> Have a good day.